I want to start with um, the, the moment when um, things began to get a lot more difficult um, for American imperialism in the Middle East, and that was when the Shah of Iran, which was uh, previously possibly uh, only rivaled by uh, Israel as the main supporter of American imperialism in the Middle East, fell in 1979. It was the beginning of a strategic problem for the United States, which they have not resolved until this day. In the 1990s, they began not only to have lost the support of Iran for their policies in the Middle East, but they began also to lose the support of Saudi Arabia. After the first Gulf War, the uh, Saudis were much more reluctant to act as the swing producers of oil in the world system and began to challenge the stationing of US bases on their soil. So by the end of the 1990s, the strategic problem which began for the United States with the 1979 revolution in Iran was becoming acute. And the project for the new American century, the emerging neoconservative lobby in the United States gaining strength um, after the end of the Cold War, had a solution for this. And the solution was that they established in Iraq a second stable, pro-business, pro-Western base for military operations in the entirety of the Middle East. The driver for the invasion of Iraq was the opportunity presented by the post-Cold War regime, was the disappearance in 1979 of Iran as a supporter of US policy, and the increasing ambiguity on behalf of the Saudis. So the drive to invade Iraq was a project designed to bolster the United States in this region. The difficulty, of course, is that whatever you can say about the invasion of Iraq and its aftermath, the one certain thing is that it has not delivered for the United States a pro-Western stable base for operations in the Middle East. It wasn't a quick war, it wasn't a light footprint, it wasn't liberation, it was an ongoing and still ongoing disaster for American imperialism. Now that, and there's a lesson to be learned here, and the lesson is this, that no matter how much you might despise a regime in the Middle East, whether you despise the regime as I despise the regime in Saddam Hussein's Iraq, or whether you dislike the regime in Iran today. The one certain lesson of the Iraq war is that there is no liberation at the point of a bayonet, that there is no liberation by US <laughs> There is no bombing your way with phosphorus bombs to freedom. There are only a million dead Iraqis and four million, four million displaced Iraqis. And anybody who thinks that a similar, a similar visitation should be made on the head of the Iranian people and that this will in some way bring forward their struggle for freedom or democracy is simply not learning the lessons of the Iraq war. It is not possible to bomb your way to freedom. That is the business of the Iranian people themselves, and they can do without the help of any president of the United States or any prime minister. <laughs> but the Americans do have an even deeper problem in the Middle East, this side of the Iraq war, than they had on the other side of the Iraq war, and for this reason. Their failure in Iraq, their failure to get what they wanted from the Iraq invasion and occupation, has willy-nilly, whether they liked it or not, whether they conspired at it or not, whether they worked for it or not, made the Iranian regime stronger in the area, not weaker in the area. It has created an Iranian regime which is a more powerful player in the Middle East and not a weaker power in the Middle East because of the American failure in Iraq. 
And that is an enduring strategic problem for the Americans, no matter who is president. Now, they wanted, in the final years of the Bush administration, to solve this problem by extending the axis of evil so they covered Iran, by preparing an attack on the nuclear facilities in Iran, most likely with the Israelis acting as their proxy. You will remember that in the last years, the Israelis were running <laughs> training missions over Cyprus because it is exactly the same distance from, Ter uh, from, from Tel Aviv to Tehran as it is from Tel Aviv to Cyprus. You, you will remember... You will, you, will re you will remember that The Guardian exposed last year that in the spring of last year, the Israeli state wanted to carry out, for real, such an attack, but they were restrained at that moment by the Bush administration, too bogged down in Iraq and too near the presidential elections to risk that prospect. But that prospect remains live. It may not, remain, it may not be imminent, but it remains live, and I agree with Ali when he says that it is a priority for the Israeli regime, even if the Americans aren't willing to sanction such an attack at the moment. So there is a strategic, an ongoing and deepening strategic problem which they couldn't address directly themselves or even directly using Israel as their proxy. What they did do, of course, in 2006, they licensed their proxy in the Middle East, Israel, to attack what they believed to be an Iranian proxy in the Middle East, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. This was a displacement operation by the Americans to try and weaken the Iranian regime by attacking its, uh, its ally and by licensing the Israelis to do so. An even greater problem, this Israeli operation failed catastrophically when they were thrown out of Lebanon by the Lebanese resistance. And that, and that, incidentally, is one of the things which drove the Israelis on to the attack on Gaza at the beginning of this year. But none of this has been successful, and none of it has dealt with the strategic problem of the weight in the Middle East of the Iranian regime created by a series or are now a series of American, American failures. Now the Obama regime <coughs> is trying to undo some of this damage. If you were to characterize the sort of overarching uh, approach of the Obama regime, I would put it like this. It is, look, George Bush got us into a lot of trouble. He started aggregating problems instead of trying to separate the problems and deal with them serially. He created, out of his own rhetoric, the idea of the axis of evil, in which Syria was included, Iran was included, Hezbollah was included, Hamas was included, practically everyone who wasn't a blood relation of the Bush family was included in the axis of evil. Now, this, this the Obama regime, believes is a problem which has got out of control for the American regime. There are, as Ali quite accurately described, clearly described, contending views about, uh, about this and how much neoconservative approach <coughs> is still live. But what is new in this situation is the attempt to try and unpick this on the part of the Obama regime. Um, Ali described the discussions that, the, or the, let's put it no more than this, of the, of, of the signaling of some willingness to talk to the Iranian regime by, uh, by <coughs> Obama. Actually, even in the final phases of the Bush regime, they were having indirect talks through Turkey with Syria over the Golan Heights in order to try and detach this problem from the axis of evil that George Bush had glued, had glued together. But there is an enduring problem here. And it's more than simply something which can be addressed by a turn from bombing to diplomacy. The problem is that the question of Iran is wholly connected with, indissolubly connected with, the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians and the question of Hamas and Hezbollah. And I don't believe that this turn in American strategy will be able to unpick those problems. And therefore, 
I believe the weight of the <coughs> Iranian regime in the Middle East will remain an intractable problem for uh, the American uh, regime, which will not wholly, completely, or for them satisfactorily, be able to be dismantled by a diplomatic project. Now, of course, it's possible that this could happen. There is no, you know, the Iranian regime is not, uh, put it mildly, is not anti-imperialist as a principle. It is anti-imperialist as a conjuncture. It happens to be on the wrong end of American imperialism at the moment. And if it could find itself to be on the right end of American imperialism, it would be no less willing to do a deal than Saddam Hussein was when he was being armed by uh, the Americans. But the problem is, at the moment, they can't find their way to that position, and the Americans can't offer them that position because of the wider relationships in the Middle East. So although the Obama regime is altering its stance, there are more fundamental issues of balance of power, of interest and conflict in the Middle East, which are liable to return it to a more hawkish stance in the future. And that, unfortunately for them, that future may come sooner rather than later because of the stance of the Israeli government, now further to the right than any Israeli government, and that's saying some considerable amount, further to the right than any previous uh, Israeli, uh, Israeli government, and therefore I think the business of campaign Iran and the business of raising here no return to military action, to an end to the sanctions regime, and we all know from Iraq how long sanctions regimes can go on, how damaging they can be, the death that they can cause, and what lies at the end of them when they don't work. When they don't work, when they don't break a regime, when in fact they, against all the wishes of many people, glue the people of the, of the country more closely uh, to the regime, when it doesn't work, then military action returns. That's why debating, understanding, and arguing through the politics surrounding the question of Iran, but insisting at the end of that discussion that there should be no military intervention by the West, that there should be no sanctions by the West, that this cannot conceivably help the position of the people of Iran. That is where I believe we should be campaigning and we should be putting our efforts.